Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. I'm here on my second day visiting the Lake George area at the Shelving Rock area of the Lake George uh, Wilderness Park. Um, I hope you enjoy the content you're about to see. And if so, and especially if you're new to the channel, I hope you subscribe and hit the like button that's gonna be right down here. And so that you'll see when you have up to upcoming content from me. Uh, please leave me any uh, comments uh, in this, in, uh, below the uh, description and I look forward to your feedback. I look forward to interacting with every one of you. So not far from here, there's a waterfall called Shelving Rock Falls. And the places from the parking lot that I pass on the way up here, it's places full of tourists. And so that's not really my scene. Um, I'm gonna be doing some, some, uh, some uh, woodland photography today. And I've already picked out a composition. And there's another spot that I actually passed on the way up here that I'll probably stop by on the way back. So hope you'll be able to see the images from two different locations today. So currently I have my camera aimed at a very interesting formation of, uh, of uh, I believe it's a lodgepole pine with a some, lot of uh, seedlings springing below it. What's unusual about this, as you'll see in the upcoming footage, is that it's kind of like a bunch of like about six trunks with like one common root. And I've never seen that on a pine tree before. Um, it's now 3.40 or almost 3.40 in the afternoon, so the sun is starting to get a little bit low and the light on it is going to be kind of interesting as the sun gets a little lower. So I'm going to wait a little bit for the light to change, but uh, in the interim, I'm going to just enjoy the quiet. Right now, there's no people. There's nothing around me except nut hatches and chipmunks from the sounds of, oh, there goes a the chickadee. So again, I'm kind of a birder. I'm always a little bit of a naturalist. I did not bring my wildlife lens today, but uh, maybe another time. In any case, let's get set up. So I've got my 5D Mark IV on here at, uh, with a 200 to, uh, 70 to 200 uh, lens uh, mounted on it. And I have it zoomed out to 100 millimeters, which is great because the camera that I'm filming on right now, the R6, I only have one lens for it, which is the 24 to 105 F4. So I'm going to basically take the same shot with both cameras. I'm going to be very interested to see which one comes out the best or if basically get very comparable results. I'm very happy with what I'm getting with the R6 so far. Uh, my, the uh, 5D Mark IV obviously has uh, a bit more megapixels, but um, I'm really looking forward to migrating eventually into mirrorless. So this is going to be kind of an interest interesting little competition. So this is the tree that I'm talking about. You can see it has a very unusual uh, tree structure here, trunk structure, and a nice set of seedling pines leading up to it. So this is my composition as I have it here. I've got my camera, my 5D, uh, 5D Mark IV set up in a vertical position. Uh, my settings right now are ISO 100, that's the base, the base ISO, um, 0 0.4 seconds at F10. So that should be, give me pretty decent depth of field. I've got it zoomed, as I mentioned, out to 100 uh, millimeters or so. Uh, basically, I want, to, I, don't, I want to not shoot, uh, show the sky at all. Whoops, and um, do that. So I want to not show the sky at all. And this is really not a scene for a wide angle. But this is great, one of the great things about having a telephoto lens or telephoto zoom lens is, you know, is to be able to get kind of like detailed images like this. Uh, I might change the camera's angle up or down or whatever. I'll probably take a few variations of it and then I'm gonna repeat the same process with the R6. So we'll see what, I, what we wind up with right after this. I've changed my composition now just slightly, still aiming at the same tree, but I felt it needed a little something. So I'm basically using these two trees behind me to kind of frame that, cent that, cent that, that center tree there. Um, and I've got the two cameras side by side right now. So they're gonna be taking, again, taking pretty much the same shot. So what I like about this particular composition is not just the two trees framing here and over here, but also this other diagonal tree that's kind of going cross, crisscrossing from left to right. I might move the R6 a little bit over to the right so it'll be in the exact same position as the um, 5D Mark IV is. And I'm also gonna wait a little bit for the light to change 
Um, it's kind of, as I mentioned before, the sun is starting to get a little bit low. And so as the light changes, it's putting different, it's, it's putting different highlights on the tree trunk and on the, uh, and on the foreground seedling. So I'm going to take a few variations of this image. And again, for each camera, you'll see the final result. Just go over the exposure settings. Um, right now I'm looking at ISO 100 on both cameras at F11 and 4 tenths of a second um, on, both sec on both cameras. I may change the shutter speed just slightly depending on how the light winds up with the final image. And again, you'll see the exposure values um, you know, when I post the images. Okay, so here it comes. So I'm at my final location. I've already taken the shots because the light is very rapidly going. The, uh, what I have here is a pond right next to Buttermilk Falls Road, which is the access, access road here. Although calling this a road is just, uh, I would say, the most liberal sense of the word. But in any case, uh, as you'll see in the images and as you'll see in the footage I'm about to show you, the water is totally still. The, uh, re the trees on the other side of the pond are, are reflected like glass. Um, you have uh, red and yellow and uh, some green in the middle. Um, so basically what I did is on both cameras, I've used about the same focal length, which I believe off the top of my head is around 80 millimeters. I put a 70 to 200 on the 5D Mark IV. And of course, for the R6, I've got, you know, the 24 to 105. So basically I was able to use the same focal length. Um, so I've got, I put a polarizer on each camera and I've taken at least two shots with each, on, with each camera. One up with the polarizer turn to get the most full color on the, on the leaves, and the other one that I would rotate the polarizer slightly to get the most color in the reflection. And I'm gonna wind up combining the two in Photoshop using an exposure blend. So um, I'm looking forward to, to processing these images, of course, by, you know, you will see them momentarily. I haven't seen them yet, but I had them in my head already. I will say this though, because of the uh, pause car. So I will say this though. Just wait for the car to go away. Da, 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 da. But I will say this though, the, 20, the R6 gave me one advantage with the 24 to 105 that I don't have with the Canon, uh, with, the R, with the 5D Mark IV, with the 7200. And that is that because the 24 to 105 can go wider than the 70 millimeters, I was able to take the shot both horizontally and vertically with the R6, as opposed to only being able to get the shot uh, vertically with the, uh, with the um, 5D Mark IV because I did not want to include either the sky or the reflection of the water. It's those are just two highlights and, they, and it, they really don't do anything to the composition. So I've composed it with excluding the sky, excluding the, reflect, the reflection of the sky, and just having the, 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 the leaves in the, uh, you know, the leaves themselves in the trees and the leaves in the reflection, but, not, but, but nothing above or below. So it's about a half hour before sunset. It's already below the horizon of the mountain to my right. So I'm going to get on the road and get out of here before it gets overly dark. I hope you've enjoyed uh, this video and I hope you'll enjoy the, uh, the photos that I'm about to show you. Uh, again, if you're not already subscribed, please go ahead and do the, uh, hit that subscribe button and the uh, notification bell here so you'll see my next upcoming videos. And um, that's it. Thanks again from beautiful Lake George. I go back home tomorrow. I might just get up early in the morning to get a sunrise shot from a different location from yesterday's. And um, if so, then you'll see it. And if not, then you won't. But in any case, thanks again. See you next time. Bye.